right. Yeah, there's some people on. They've been waiting. We've got, I don't know, 30, 40 people. And uh, who was who was first in the chat today? I need to set this chat up here. We've got David Bura was number one in the chat. What's up? Three long hours to wait before the booms, chocks, and other zaps. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, just getting going finally. Apologies for the delay. Um, we've got the audio and video worked out coming from the UK, and it's all good. Let's see, who else is it here in the chat? Luminous Cloud is here. Acid Bat is back. And Aime is back. We've got Lubatero from Buenos Aires. Welcome. Manuel Gloda is back. Josh Holiday. Holy smokes, we are back. And Bill Bancroft, 343 students. Very good producer, learning about making lots of different styles of music. Uh, I'm uh, interested to hear what you came up with, Bill, because you're one of the submissions today. Funk Doors here. Trev's is here. Lightway. Hello, that's a new one. Welcome. Krista Lucifer. I think that's another new name. Uh, Itze's back. Who else? Did I say Josh Holiday already? I'm going to say it again. I forget. Hard Lounge is here. The Pain is here. And uh, Omar Maya. Love from LA. Very nice. Ariel Stura. I think that's everybody. Hard Lounge Live. That's it. I've got everybody who's initially in here. Uh, Welcome, everybody. It's Electro Saturday today. Despite what the titles showed you, it's it says Techno Saturdays, but today is Electro Saturdays. I really need to get that updated finally. So anyway, really glad to be here and really psyched to be doing a feedback session with my guest today. He's been on the show before. He's a superior electro producer. He's a, a very uh, skilled and talented mixing engineer. And um, yeah, he knows what he's doing. So let's just get right into it. We're starting late, so we shouldn't uh, waste any more time. Let's bring in and cross your fingers that the video and audio is still holding out. We've got here Phil Ballin, Sync24 from Cultivated Records. What's Excuse up? Him. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm here with my man Matt. Hey White Matt, what's up? Uh, hey, how's it I going? just need to add actually. Um, thank you for all the uh, accolades there, but um, Matt actually uh, was one of the first people that uh, trained uh -huh, me. All right. <laughs> He's also a very I good producer. I think acknowledging uh, you know where you come from and where you learned is really important. <laughs> so appreciate that, and nice to meet you. <laughs> Yeah, my production levels uh, really stepped up after I worked with Matt. He he, he taught me some new tricks. That's very kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think we met around 2007. Yeah, we were just joking because we're in the studio today to um do some work, and I think we started the track about six years ago. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we meet every like two years, but, uh, have some beers, do funny. some work. We'll see. It might be out in five years. You never know. One of these days. I mean, but it takes me a while types. to get stuff done, like, honestly. I like do sketches and then wait for months or even years before I finish them. So I, I feel you. Yeah. And no, actually, weirdly, we had um, yesterday on Fabric, uh, like Fabric Club in London, uh, Helena Half did a mix CD, uh, which she included our first song we ever wrote nice. together, which we made in two, 2006 as Signal Type. Nice. Um, 2006 so yeah, i don't good yeah it's been a while it's i don't even think i've heard that track yeah. i'm gonna have to go back and dig that up yeah in abyss All right. it's called c-e-o-o-3 called, uh, -E okay. signal type and matt was actually on uh i think c-e-o-o-one matt's yeah, on as well the first one first record I mean, so we getting that started yeah. yeah what was that one called i can't remember spinning something spinning, spinning mobile. mobile all right He's so he's been there from the start. Excellent. Big up, Matt. Well, I'm glad to have both of you on. It's a nice. It's like a, a b extra bonus to have three people on the show or two guests and me. Yeah. So, let's dive into it. So, as you know, um, we're checking out tracks submitted by viewers, and it's all electro. And uh, you know, some Good. of the submissions are new to this. Some are more experienced. Some are coming from different styles and trying their uh, their hand at, at, at doing uh, ele something electro-related. So, you know, let's dive in. The first uh, submission we have is from Machine Funk. And uh, let me get over to the right page here. Make sure... Here we go. So this is uh, Magellanic Clouds by Machine Funk. Let me know if the audio sounds okay for you. Yeah, we're good. I like the pad, classic electro right. pad. I mean, I think 
you do these chromatic shifts up and down that's such a that's the electro language is doing these uh minor melodies pentatonic melodies and shifting minor seconds like that Let me know, viewers, if the uh, audio level is good for you, if you can hear us speaking over the music clearly, and feel free to give us comments in the chat. Be constructive. Say what you like first. That's what we like to do. And then we can move into uh, what could be better. We also might be uh, jumping through the tracks depending on time. I mean, I can't critique it. I'd play it. Well, play already, it that's, that's high so praise. This is, I would say it's got that vibe. It's like a warm-up vibe, right? Yeah, I think early in the set could work nice. Sounds like there's a little delay, like the chords are going through a long delay. Do you hear that? Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. I'd be, that's one thing I might be a little careful about. It sounds almost like a mistake. Like, like, uh, the, the, uh, because what's happening is it's like, Boy, now it's fine. It's, the pads go up. <laughs> yeah, that was. That's just something to look at. Like you've got that quiet echo in the background, and I'm not sure that you need it. Okay. Yeah, I think stripping it down completely as a contrast. Or at that point right there. I'm going to jump in a little bit and see what else it does. Okay, I think we got a pretty good idea of what, what the track is doing. I mean, overall, the mix is good. The production's good. Uh, you got any thoughts about the the mix and or anything like that? Sounded right to me. It's quite a minimal mm -hmm. track, so I think uh, the layers feel to work coherently. Sure. What do you reckon, Matt? Yeah, uh, all the sounds are great. Um, I think possibly the pad sound. It, I might not fade it in and out in the same way. I would probably cut it off and then bring it in and. Rather than oh, like harder volume, edits, rather than yeah, harder edits, rather than volume in and out. I agree with that. Like the, yeah. it, a little Aside more defined that, yeah. sections, and I would say, yes. I mean, if this is done, if they're done with it, fine. But if you're still working on it, one other element to contrast between the pads and the bass, you know, it doesn't really have a lead. I mean, in an electro and other styles of electronic dance music, like the bass line often is the lead, right? It's the main melody. It's driving the whole thing. But something to counterpoint that, something like whether it's a vocal sample or a melody or some weird noises that come in and out just to contrast the sections because you've got these like floaty parts with the pads, which are kind of dark and sinister. And then you've got parts that are more stripped down. Maybe in those sections, you can kind of take the pads out completely and then put in another contrasting element. It could be more interesting that way. Yeah, I mean, if I were to be uh, super critical, um, I spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time uh, working uh, all of the like sections yeah. of the song. It's kind of what takes probably takes me so long to write music because to get interest in the music, I feel like everything has to really each bit should, even if it's a subtle change, just little things that trigger trigger your mind to know that it's evolving. Uh, whereas what I heard there, I know we jumped through the song, but it's all like kind of mm -hmm. quite linear, one level. So that that to me could be something that that could be looked Agreed. upon, just to add I interest to the yeah, music. Yeah, really. and you can what you said about levels, like you could you're zoomed out and you see the big structure, and then you can kind of zoom in and see okay what's happening within these sections, and zoom in further and what's happening within these bars, and creating more detail yeah. right that changes over time. Nice, exactly. All right, still really we're off to a good start. Um, you know, right from the beginning, you said you'd play this and like start a set with this. So I think definitely Machine Funk is onto something. So good job. Nice. Yep. I'll keep, keep up, up the, the good, good work. work. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next, we've got a track called Hole in the Wall by Yobu Kuman. Let's have a listen. Mm -hmm. 
guess this is part of an EP he's doing called London Nights. I imagine you might know a little something about London Nights every now and then, right? Dave, yeah. <laughs> Full of rain, usually. <laughs> Today is like London in New York. It's gray. It's a little dismal. <laughs> it's like a, a typical rainy day in the city for you guys. This is good soundtrack for that, I think. Yeah. Interesting pad. Right. The the panning is interesting because it creates like a polymetric kind of rhythm against the the beat. main thing first that jumps out to me here is I think um, I don't know how far along the track is but maybe a little like um little little work on the mix oh, could okay. be good on this you know to get get a bit more snap out the snares and maybe that uh, pad with the pitch bend up was really nice. nice that was good that was that's good. a good character yeah I think all the elements are there just um I think some some little little mixing tricks could be be good on this. Just to sure. chunk it out. It reminds me of a old electric chord record. Yeah, you know, I have a couple chord. of those early electric chord releases. I agree. Yeah, it's called Third Third Space. Third, third from the Sun. Pretty sure third I have that in a box sun. somewhere. Oh. Yeah, it's one side of the twelve. I have to say, bit. all my records are are packed up in storage right now. I keep thinking about where's that record? Oh, I gotta drive 30 minutes to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this is interesting, this break. Like what's the clap doing? It sounds like a different tempo. Huh. Interesting idea. Yeah. And I'm glad to have a breakdown. Like this, like taking all the pads out, like that's the last track could have used a moment like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it some light and shade. Yeah, I mean, I think the sounds are cool. I like this little kind of funky filtered. Sounds like... I don't know if there's some sync between the oscillators going on there. There's some cross mod going on blip between the oscillators. But um, it's a nice vibe. Let's jump in a little bit and see what else it does. All right, it's pretty much starting doing what the, the beginning did again. All right. So yeah, I think another good, solid track. Um, nice vibe. I like the dark groove. Um, but I think you were onto something with the mix. That's that. Uh, but also probably with like you mentioned about details and stuff. Uh, other little things that could change over five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. Says it's interesting. Last night I was listening to um, a mix I did uh, along about ten, twelve mm -hmm. years ago. And uh, just how much my production came along from then. And the main thing is, I used to finish tracks, uh, so many records I've had out, where I get to a point and the tracks yeah. are done. And now I will spend as long as I spent making the song, mixing the song. Literally, I can spend another... It's my favourite part now, it's just all the detail, all the... All the, the getting yeah. the levels, the EQs, the effects, the reverbs um weirdly i listen now to um a lot more okay. pop music uh at the weekend i love the weekend sure. the production pff, i mean but I mean, it's more i've got a nine-year-old daughter so i have to listen to a lot of this pop stuff but it's absolutely blowing my mind uh the amount and i watch a ton of detail like youtube videos and stuff like the amount of um the work that these mix engineers put in every 16 bars is just whole other worlds are getting mm -hmm. created and the effects and the eqs and i think that's the subliminal thing that people sure. can do with their tracks uh is to spend the spend the time yeah, on the and mix. I, to be fair though like that level of mixing detail is it takes time to learn how to do that or it takes money to hire someone who's really knows what they're doing to get that sound but um it's worth a shot for sure and it's definitely because also with, with electronic music in general the mix is part of the composition right like the whole it's you're not just a band yeah. going into the studio and you're recording and then i mean even then with modern 
pop music and rock music, there's so much interaction between the band and the producer and the mix engineer. It's all, they're all going back and forth all the time. So if you're just you yourself doing all those things, you got to like maybe switch hats and like, you know, go back and approach it as a, a, a someone else might and think, try to think about it differently and see, okay, what's missing here? What could I do? Or what mix techniques could I learn that can uh, help this sort of pop better? Yeah, I think because Matt, you really showed me that when we worked before. Like, because Matt used to write a lot of nice. drum and bass, and it was just all, all of that connectivity of the sounds and the process. Yeah, and I used stuff. to pull apart snare drums and take the, the lower end of a snare drum and sort of place over a, a higher part of a snare drum and just kind of thicken up the yeah. sound a bit. And yeah, yeah, just spend a all lot the little tricks. Really focus on cool. those kind of things. Uh, we got a, a comment from Luminous Cloud, who's a regular on the show and he's mentioned he thinks that the panning kind of effect on that pad that that i mentioned earlier is maybe it could be slowed down a little bit and maybe smoothed out a little bit it then it's interesting because okay. like the you know the the pad the, that, that melody is going whoa 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 it's kind of doing a wobble right over top of the beat and it's it's making it polymetric and it's what you know sometimes you want that kind of out of sync feeling where you're not sure where the beat is i feel like in, and he might be right in this case slowing it down and making it a little bit smoother and, and not interrupting the groove as much could be a good thing to look at yeah okay so i agree with the luminous cloud there well, let's see and also um Someone, someone said they. Yeah, he likes the riff though. Not to, not to, not to critique too much. Uh, he he did his job. He he get the, gave the positive comment first. He likes the riff, but he thinks the modulation could be smoothed out. All right, let's move along okay. next to this is Dog Ed. I had a I had we had a chat once about how to pronounce it because if you see it, it says D O G E A D, and I'm like, is that? Uh, yeah, if, if you're Ed, British, you get it right away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but if you're if you're not British, <laughs> you might go what Doja Do Dogia Do you know. So I was I, I should have known. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's Same right. Dog. So yeah, um, we've had submissions from him before. Let's check out what he's got this time. Uh, sounds like a Sing Twenty Four. Uh, <laughs> maybe you have a fan in the uh, dog Ed. <laughs> nice mix. Mm. I yeah, like the, nice the, the, the sawtoothy, like super wide, like tickling my ear thing going on. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how that will sound in mono. That's the thing. If you did it right, it'll sound good in mono. It won't disappear. So, yeah, it's quite yeah. a wide track. Well, and it... I, I love that mix technique where you have a couple of elements that are super wide, but everything else is in the middle, and it makes it seem even bigger than if you try to pan everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Nice little bleep melody coming in there. That's a nice contrast to the to the swirly, trippy sawtooth thing going on with the bass yeah i like this yeah good track good group and like he's doing what i suggested for earlier is having a contrasting section with a new element that comes in okay Yeah, it's got a great definitely. groove. Definitely. Yeah, that's the thing. The groove's good. Yeah. I'd definitely be dancing to this. Um, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, would you play this track as a DJ? Sure. I would. Nice. Yeah, 100%. This is, this is very, nice. very up my street. And another new element. Slightly ravey. But, but chill. Yeah, it's got a little, little rave. Gated rave. Yeah, Trancy. but... I wish that word had not been taken away. Like... Yeah, I like it. I, I make all my tracks. Well, like, uh, yeah, well, hypnotic. yeah, you have to say hypnotic because if you talk about trance, it brings up a whole other sound in people's minds, right? But we're just talking about uh, hip talk. We're just talking trance. about hypnotic stuff, right? No, I love all that old uh, tip records. Tip, right? Early yeah, yeah. Trance. the early I stuff it, definitely. I think it influenced a lot of my yeah, music, to be honest. There, that I would say like the sound design for sure, right? 
I listened to it. I, I heard some stuff the other day and I'm like, all those old sequences. That's exactly nice. what I put in my tracks. This all is right, a really nice break. Let's see what yeah, happens when it comes back. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. I was curious to know if he was going to break it down and take away those big anthem lead or if it was going to stay up and he stayed up. Which you could go either way with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Stick with the groove. That's good. going to turn that down a little bit. I want to make sure people can hear you. This one was a little bit louder than the last two. Yeah, this is good. Let's see if it breaks down after this section. I'm imagining at some point the, that string is going to go away. Josh Halliday says, sounds good in my treated room. <laughs> Glad you got a treated room, Josh. I wish I did. <laughs> Actually, no, I got, I've got some pretty big bass traps in the corners here. It's not bad for a non-professional yeah. studio. <laughs> this is a really nice comment. Check this out. Mitochondria, is it? Mycotondria says, awesome, really holds the tension, but in a very refined and assured way. Yeah, I would say from what I remember from Doggett's tracks from before, he's confident. Like, you can hear there's a level of, uh, you know, experience in his tracks. Sounds good and to me. He's doing... Nice all right, let me just back sure. up here. Do you hear these little things that just came in? The little blips in the background and that little buzzy sound and that little spooky sound in a row? Little robot noises. That's the kind of detail we're looking for in the other tracks, right? Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Just got a groove, good totally. groove on this one. And yes, it's repetitive. The beat doesn't like change. Say, the the bass doesn't are... change. But the other elements are evolving without messing the groove up. Nice. Yeah. Good work, dog. Totally. <laughs> Luminous Cloud is saying maybe some more rhythmic <laughs> funk here and there in the perk. So I'm guessing that means like variation in the drums. So maybe I never really very well, much. That's the thing. Like, so do you want it to be hip? If like you it. want it to be hypnotic, you won't change your drums too much. Yeah, let it roll. But if you want to like you know roll. get tricky and have fills and be more like IDM or more drum and bass or breaks, then you're going to do more fills and snare drums and things like that. So that's sort of a taste thing, right? Nice. Yeah, for sure. No, I like that one. My favorite cool. so far. Some new names in the chat. What's up, Metahertz? Hello. Martin Houter is here. Ellie Groove Tiger. We're getting a bunch of new names today. This is great. Did I say Stereo Decor before? That's someone who's come back. Nice to see you again. Um, this is 343 TV. You're watching Electro Saturdays with myself, John Selway, and my guests. S say your names, fellas. Introduce yourselves to the people who are new. I'm Phil Sync24. I'm Matt Whitehead. Matt Whitehead from Mad Whitehead. <laughs> yeah, I'm from London. From London. Yeah, that's so nice. So yeah, I'm really glad to have you guys here today. It's a good name. We're having fun <laughs> hanging out, listening to pretty cool stuff from these electro tracks. So I'm just looking at the time. What time did we actually officially get started? We were so frazzled. I was so frazzled trying to figure out like getting the audio and video going. I didn't even look at the clock when I hit start. I didn't Has it been like 20 be minutes, honest, 30 minutes could. almost already? <laughs> All right, and we've gone through Ending three start, tracks. Really? So I think we're going to have to be more efficient because we've got three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Let's play the last one. Uh, I like that one. Dude, I'm sure tracks. Dog Ed, dog Ed uh, will share it with you, we're, we're, I'm sure, if you ask him. So uh, let's see. Let's move cheers, into uh, Dreams Are Weird by Kobanya3000. We're start All those tracks have been low-key and mellow to start with so far. Yeah. That's a steady kick drum. We talk about this sometimes, like electro with steady versus uh, um, syncopated, typical electro beats. Like, what makes it electro if it's got a 4-4? Four four? I guess the sounds, the exotic does that well. <laughs> So, you know, it's borderline sometimes. Do you call it electro? Do you call it techno? Is it both? Is it even house? But not electro house, if you know what I mean. Like, this is like mm. old school Chicago house tempo, right? But the sounds are very electro. Yeah. yeah. So that's, you know, that's why we're listening to it. Mm. 
Sounds like weird dreams. Any thoughts, Phil? Yeah, no, I like it. It's, it's not so much my style, this one, but I can I appreciate it. Uh, nice drum sounds. Is it like a seven? What was it? Seven two seven or? Right. Yeah, it sounds a bit seven, like that. Seven oh seven. Yeah, I know what you mean it's definitely got that older like Chicago vibe. Quite deep. It's a nice string sound. Yeah, I mean, here, I right? like that the nice strong pad sound. synth melody. It's you know somewhere between a pad and a lead. Yeah, might be a little loud for the dance floor. That's a really loud. Bright, oh maybe. yeah, maybe it's a little too bright. But like for a dance floor track, yeah. I would. It, yeah, this would be so intense on a big system that synth. So it could be a mixing yeah. thing, just smoothing it out, compressing a little, pulling it back, something like that. Yeah. We're kind of doing like electro acid, I think. I can hear the 303 sneaking in now. Mm. Yeah, I, go, I get that. It sounds kind of lazy. Like the 303 is a little bit synced late. You know what I mean? Like. A swing on it. I don't think it's swing. I think it's like literally slightly late. Like the sync has shifted over. If it's hardware, it could be just that's how the hardware is behaving, you know? Yeah. Abe Duque does that stuff on purpose. He's put out tracks where the 303 goes out of sync just because he wanted it to be weird like that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's cool. It's got a looseness, right? Metahertz is saying the drums sound almost disco. And I'd agree. It's got that kind of late, a little bit late 70s, early 80s synth disco vibe as well as being kind of acidy. And, you know, there's you could draw a line between Kraftwerk and Giorgio Moroder and Acid House in Chicago and Italo Disco and Electro. It's all compatible. So yeah, this yeah, track definitely... Sure. You know, would fit in an electro, like a more low key chill electro set, or would fit in a house set, or in an acid set, like, a, or in a new disco set. Like, it's, I think it's kind of straddling worlds pretty well. Now here's the part. There it is. Yep. Oh, now we got the old rhythm. school kind of electro funk. Well, actually, it's a little more breaky, isn't it? Interesting. All right, I'm gonna just jump in a little bit. All right, it comes back, builds up again, back into the straight kick drum. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm of I, I always have mixed feelings about tracks that switch from steady kick drum to broken beat or syncopated, then back to steady. How do you feel about that? Wow. Uh, well, I'm not really a DJ, but I think if I was, that might be an issue for me. I mean, yeah, I don't mind it. Um, I've done mm. a couple that has um, successfully translated. Uh, but yeah, I know it, it can be. I think if, if it's done correctly, it's cool. I, I didn't mind how that yeah, broke I down think though. Th in this case, it worked because it was, you know, it's mainly a steady kick drum track and then it has the, 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 the breakbeat kind of electro in the middle for variation and then it goes back. That works. Um, it, it just depends yeah. on how you implement it. I've heard tracks that should not have combined both, like because the groove of one was so good that the other one interrupted it. But if you do it right, it could also be, yeah, as a DJ, up. it can be helpful so you could transition from one style to another within one track. So that could yeah, be good. Yeah, for sure. All right, but yeah, overall, overall, I think, good track. I like how it's combining different vibes together. It's electro enough to fit in today, for sure. Um, what do you think about the mix? It seemed like it's a, a, li a little bit dull, maybe. So again, some some kind of mm -hmm. EQ just to, to brighten stuff up. And the, might be handy. the low end choice might be um, deliberate. This isn't a big, boomy, deep, thumpy track. You know, there's plenty of, you know, having like more lighter, kind of more mid rangey kicks is cool for certain types of music. But I wouldn't mind a little bit more low end. It could be. I don't think this is mastered necessarily. So that could just be fixed up maybe at that level if it's balanced well enough. Yeah, for and sure. And yeah, I would bring that pad down or smooth it out somehow, because I know if you were to play this really loud, that would be quite potentially really oppressive. If you're just <clears> using <throat> it as like an ambient kind of chill track at a lower volume or in a in a more chill set, it's probably fine. Nice one. Good work. Yeah. From cool. Kobanya 3000. Who we got next? We have got... Functor, another returning submission. This track is called Arch...
Everybody's on the dark and spacey trip today. It's a theme. We'll start yeah. with the pads. Everyone likes the pads. Although, the energetic bass, the plucky bass, is bodes well, I think, to bring the energy energy back up. Nice tight hi hats. I like that. That sounds like a, an. It doesn't sound like a synthetic hi hat. It sounds like a more acoustic type hi hat, but really, really short. Like they really super fast decay. Do you know that hi hat sample? Does it sound like a drum machine to you? Yeah, whatever it is. So it could be almost anything. Oh, I like that. So I yep. like this track. Good groove. There's, there's some funk in there. Metahertz in the chat saying it's fall equinox tonight. Maybe that's accounting for some of the moody uh, collective consciousness we're oh, having okay, here. Okay, the moody you know? vibes. That sounds like a 101. Metahertz agrees too. Sounds like a 101. With pulse width modulation. What do you think are like, uh, not to not to distract too much from checking out the track, but like, SH 101 or Pro 1, which is your favorite? If you got both, eh? I, I own both. I, yeah. I think the SH 101 is my personal Agreed. favorite. I love the Pro 1 too, but yeah. they're both good at doing this. SH yeah. 101, man. That's top, top synth. I think the Pro 1's yeah. more versatile. You can, you can, you can. It's good for doing kind of strange, small sounds, right. kind of. But uh, I think the, the SH101 is good for sort of low-end bass. This one's... Yeah, but when you use that, uh, the sequencer, you get some wild stuff out there, 101 sequencer, right? Getting back to the track, there's some really it. nice musical evolution going on here. Like, the melody's evolving and changing, which I... Yeah, it's good. And like, to do that without totally messing the flow up, that's a good skill to have. It's not too noodly, right? Like it's interesting, but the groove is still and the groove is still there. Yeah, this nice. is really good. Awesome. I like the portamentos on the yeah. on the notes. There's a 303. This time it's in sync. <laughs> so, you know, what Functor is doing is he's not, he's not necessarily adding... Mo There's a certain number of parts that he has and they're just going back and forth and like one element will stay in for that whole four minutes before the break and then just change musically while other things are coming in around it. I mean, it's it's quite sophisticated, the composition. Yeah, it's good. Good arrangement. <laughs> Luminous Cloud says, is it Carl Finlow submitting under an alias? <laughs> Why would he... <laughs> that's a, that's, that's, that's a, a good, good compliment. compliment. That's really nice of him. And... As you know, Carl's been on the on the on the show. Sounds more like more apology to me yeah. than, than Finland. Yeah, it's got that vibe. They always bring the three hundred threes in with the pads. Yeah, this is great. All right, I'm going to jump in a little bit. I know it's just going to break down from here. I mean, if I recall, yeah, I mean, Funktor's track last time was great as well. Funktor definitely knows what Funktor is doing. So yeah, nice one. Any last comments? I think, I mean, what's the fix in this? Nothing, right? Like, it's done. <laughs> the yeah, mix it's is a nice good. song. Nice song. Um, if, again, if I were to be hypercritical, because it's so busy with all the melody parts, similar synth sounds, right? Multiple 101s are similar to 101 and the 303. They're all sitting in the same frequency range. Um, if you were to just yeah. pan them apart a little bit here and there, a little bit more so they're not on top of each other. I mean, it works. It's not too much. It's not it's still mixed really well don't get me wrong but like 
it, uh, there are a couple of points where it was like very busy that maybe you want to give them, them more space in the mix to help with that. Uh, just a suggestion. What, do you think that would make, would be helpful? Yeah, it could mm -hmm. help a little. Yep. You would. Probably. Okay. We're, we're in, we, I concur. Um, <laughs> let's, let's move in. All right. So this is Xenopus. This is Bill. He's been a 343 Lab student. And um, Bill's, uh, I'll, just to preface this, this is going to be a little bit different from what the other ones. Um, this Electro is new for Bill. Uh, Zeno, the Xenopus project, he does a lot. It's a little more pop oriented, I would say, most of the time, but his skills are very good. And um, I encouraged him to like, like uh, try out these beats, like see how he would, you know, do his sound using like these classic electro beats. I was like, listen to Planet Rock, go back to Kraftwerk, check out these drum machine patterns that are like this certain style of electro, electro funk, and see how that works with your style of music. And this is what he came up with. So let's see how that goes. Oh, nice. Reminds me a bit of uh, your synapse work. Oh, sure. The, the sequence. Right. The arpeggiated kind of melodic. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like anthemic in the first eight bars, right? It's just right in there. Yeah. It sounded, I didn't, it sounded like it started quite far right, into yeah. the track. <laughs> kicks, you could give it a more of a, more of a I was gradual say, build. It needs a, a build up, a, a longer intro that comes into this part, probably. Yeah. Well, kick drum fills. I like the snare drum. Yeah. So this reminds me of like. I thought go he was going to switch. I thought he was going to switch the uh, drums on you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's definitely mastered everything sounds really forward i'm gonna turn it down a little bit so we can yeah. be heard over it i like the, the the vocal fading away like that was kind of cool what was i going to say this reminds me yeah, of yeah. like u.s like florida breaks like trancy breaks from the rave scene in the 90s okay. in, in on the east coast here and on the, i mean in west coast too but you, you're familiar with that stuff right not really. Yeah, there's all this. Not there's hugely. all this like southeastern United States breakbeat and electro funk that and rave music mixed together. And this is kind yeah, of this reminds me sound, of that. Man. No, I'm not down. Some of it, I'm but you know about the that Miami that electro that guys, that right? I know Miami, but I, I, the more right, breaks, right? But yeah, there's I total crossover with my, that stuff. Like the 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 hmm. bass and electro scene in Miami totally fed into the breaks and rave scene as well like there was a lot of crossover back okay. then yeah i'd have to i'd have to uh, yeah look into that yeah cool it's chat, nice though. i mean it's musical it's nice chord progression and you know definitely crossover material like it's electro but it also could be used for a pop song like if it had a vocal on it you could sing over this and I know yeah, like yeah, true, Bill true. does a lot of, you know, the Xenopus tracks, a lot of them do have vocals. Yeah, it's good, good production. I kind of, speaking of Miami bass, a real deep 808 boom under this would be great. Oh yeah, that would, it needs a little, I think a little something like that. Give like it you wouldn't weight. want a busy, heavy, fast bass line because that's going to interfere with all the mid-range arpeggiated boom, stuff. Boom. But just like a boom, boom every now and then. Like some sub would be great, yeah, especially exactly. on the drops. It's there. You can hear the kick drum's got some decay to it, but it's really compressed. So could exaggerate that a little bit. All right. This is nice. It's also like not the dark. It's it's moody, but it's not doing the like dark, mysterious September rainy day vibe. It's a little more like you're on the beach or something. It's a nice day, but you're just chill, you know. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> I wish I was on the beach. <laughs> right. I usually uh, we were, we were Bill. I'm um, sorry, Phil. With Phil, they were mine. Was joking about whether I had any Brooklyn loggers. And, oh, yeah, okay. and as I, I, I happen to actually remember that we had an event here at the, <laughs> at the school uh, the other night and there was some leftover in the fridge. So I don't usually drink live, but hey, I'm making an exception for these guys. 
<laughs> yep. You Take guys, you, you guys need something. Go get a beer. Uh, we oh, got you're good. Beers, That's right. We got Bro we got Brooklyn Lagers. Wait, we, you do have? Don't... Cheers. I thought you were just so joking. Saying, we you actually have them. <laughs> no, no, we <laughs> nice. have Brooklyn Lager. We are all good then. We're on the same frequency. All right, let's see what kind of frequencies are going on in Julian Castle's nystagmus. Nyst nystagmus. I just butchered that. <laughs> oh no! What is this? Like every chat with the pads at the start. It's pads day here on Electro Saturdays. Should we? We need to put some pads on. If we don't have a pad in our tune today, let's let's add one in. <laughs> From the start. Metahertz is drinking Stella. Why not? Cheers to anyone who's having a nice one. Cheers. Cheers. All right, so we, we got the word from Bill. I will add an 808 for the last one. Yeah. Good stuff. Got out this nice little grooves. Nice mix. It's really detailed. Yeah, good little sounds. Chat likes the snare. Vogson says the snare smacks. I think so. It's it's like sharp without. All right. Sometimes electro tracks have snares that are just too much. This one is like right there. It's like sharp and it cuts, but it's not scratching your eyes out. Not too. <laughs> yep. Fair. I always like them scratching your eyes. Okay. Out. <laughs> More distortion on the clap, please. Yeah, cool little mix on this one. That yeah, I like good. the vocal sample. I really like the bass line. I like the sort of sample and hold style I mean, bass line. That's, that's just... Sounds great. If you make electro and you don't do some like re-triggered like sample and hold filter or modulation, are you really an electro producer? <laughs> Everybody does it. And it always works. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done that. What, really? That. Yes, you have. <laughs> I can hear it now. I probably, I, I don't know, man. I've never that technical. I just SH one hundred and one. So great, Metahertz man. asked, yeah. "Why yeah. is the baseline so wet and organic?" And I think that's probably what we're talking about. It's resonant, right? You can hear. It's like the the filter resonance is ju it's juicy. juicy, right? It's and then it's being modulated. There's a little delay on it. Yeah, there. that's the delay sure. Helps. And then, yeah, the echo around the stereo pan, like the ping pong, is kind of sounding a little watery, liquidy, too. Yeah. Just sounds very analog to me, like a nice wetness. It's good. I can't tell what the vocal sample says, though. It doesn't matter. Maybe it's saying the track title. I can't. It's, it, it, Julian, are you in the chat? What does it say? I don't know if it's if it's the Brooklyn Lager. Or the track is uplifting somehow. It's got really good energy. As moody as it is with those long pads, right? It's cold. I like it. All right. So, Metahertz in the chat says, sounds like it could go on forever, but we don't have forever, so I'm going to jump in a little bit. Nice break here. Let's hear how it comes back. Okay. I have only... I mean, I really like that track. I have only for like a chill, hypnotic, electro track that still has energy, right? It's not sleepy somehow, at least not right now. Maybe in that last yeah. transition after that little mini break there, strip it down more. That's That just... Cause it, how long was uh, that for the song like another minute 45 so yeah i feel like you okay. could break it down further a you know it's up to you like if the pads go through almost consistently through most of it so that does kind of take over so it's just again it's a taste thing like do, do you want it to be super chill and hypnotic the whole time or do you want to provide more contrast but again it's not wrong the way it is yeah no, Very good, good work. work. Nice stuff, Very Julian soft. Castles. All right, next we have... Oh, I think this is pretty chill, too. Jazztopia. 
Voxen, right? We were just talking about Voxen in the chat here. <clears throat> I'm always a sucker for this kind of electro, like the jazzy, moody, rich chords. It's like the, the yeah, legacy yeah. of Paul Hardcastle and like, okay, Detroit too, right? Because they like that, those kind of rich jazzy I chords. I think every track has started with a pad. It's interesting. It's in the air. Uh, pads in there. Okay. Nice bleepy oh, so 90s kind dog. of style there, a little bit. Yeah. IDM ish, but old school, right? Yeah, yeah. Sir Gion in the, in the chat is asking, how do you create that robotic sound? I want to have a go at making it, stuff like this. Well, Sir Gion, when we're, we're going to do some more streams where we make electro and get into more production stuff, so stick around. To deny those things which are ugly. Hmm, interesting. To hide those things. Meditative stuff, she huh? does not want. Yeah, ma'am. If you wish to get out of prison, instead of saying... Oh, here we go. Luminous Cloud always comes back with this idea. Groaned folk electro. It's like that chill electro for, for old people. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Switch up. I like the 808 bass. That's a kind of Miami yeah. bass style, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah very nice. It wouldn't mix nice to that other uh, Miami breaks one. I mean, those chord stabs are pretty bonkers. It's all, I would say, it's so close to being too much with the little variation fill thing, you but I like it anyway. It's, it was definitely surprising, right, when that came in? Yeah. Yeah, it's a switch, a real switch. And that's a dangerous thing. Sometimes when you do that and you try too hard, it doesn't work. This one, I think it was smoothly done. Hold up. What was that? What was that little eh, eh, eh thing? <laughs> okay. A lot of reverb. I wonder if like slightly less reverb would be good. Because it's really washed out sounding. Yeah, interesting chat. A mixture yeah, of styles. Definitely. Which he does not want. If you wish to get Alright, we'll let it come back in. More 303, that's good. Oh yeah, more 303. What's going on today? Run, multiple running themes today, somehow, randomly. Okay. Right Whoa. there would have been the time to take the chords out. Yeah, because it's been it's they're really a I lot. I like the chords. I think that would have been the place to yeah, it's busy. busy. So and I think as much as I really like that switch and I like that chord progression, I think it's like atypical for this style of music, which I think is cool um, to do something a little slightly surprising like that. But it's a strong sound and it's loud and there's a lot of reverb on it, so I feel like the balance of it could be a little bit better. And then right there in the arrangement, you know, okay. towards the end to break it down, just like the last one, give it a little bit of contrast. And that's not just thinking like a DJ where I want to mix out. That's just creates interest for listening. It creates contrast and when you know, it makes you want to listen all the way to the end if it changes. I always like yeah, it when yeah. you have the end of a track and it breaks it down, but then there's one little new thing that you never heard before or you didn't notice that kind of help. It helps it continue oh, all the way to the end. So yeah, yeah. nice Good work, idea. Voskan. I think I said Vogsen before. Sorry about that. I says this is first. Dude, you're good. Track. Keep doing it. All right. <laughs> he threw the kitchen oh, sink I see. Out. Like I can see that you're excited about trying a new style, and you just throw everything in there. Yeah, you did. It's good. It. All right, Electrotechnic has made a track called Why, and I guess once we listen to it, we'll maybe hopefully have an answer. Nope. Where's the Where's pad? The Electrotechnic. <laughs> didn't you get didn't you understand the assignment? Hmm. Alright, we're getting a little more tougher Germanic Anthony Rother vibes now, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. 
which, you know, we're all about that too. I think the synths are a little loud in the mix. I'm sorry, the synths loud? I think the synths versus the drums maybe. Could... I see, and the, the drums are very dark too. All of the tracks we've been listening to yeah, so far little, have little... sharp, bright transients on the drums. These sound very smooth. Yeah, it's good yeah. groove though. I mean, and that dark sound might be on purpose. They might be going for a smoothed out, not lo-fi, but you know what I mean. It's almost a little yeah, more yeah. soundtracky the way it's mixed. I noticed that in a lot of TV and film soundtracks that it have moody stuff and synthy moody stuff. It's not super bright. It has high frequency detail, but it's pulled back a little bit. This kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. Good, good energy despite being so dark, right? Yeah. Is that a pad? That's nearly a pad. Yeah, so there's, pad. yeah there's like a low octave underneath now that's come in. But you're right, I feel like the synth could come back and the drums could come forward a little. Especially the snare and the kick. Yeah. Oh, vocoder, nice. It's a little bit. I see what it's saying. Going for it, vocals. Why do we kill? We want peace. Why something war? No, why war? We want justice. Why do we oppress? Maybe. Okay. I think so. It's yeah. A political one. And all really legit questions. I think we all feel yeah. this nowadays. You might as well, if you're going to make a strong statement like that, make it up front. Mix that vo vo vocal right up front. Make it really clear. Because you won't hear, yeah. I could hardly understand some of it. And, you know, mixing vocoders isn't the easiest thing to do in the world. Making intelligible... No, I thought it sounded... Well, like no, it sounds, it. It sounds cool, but, like, you're saying, you're, you're speaking words that are asking strong questions that me are meaningful. You want it to be intelligible you want people to clearly hear it so i would work on that yeah yeah i think part of the tricks using a vocoder is sort of over pronouncing right. your words really getting those transients through i asked anthony rother about that and he does he goes in and edits by syllable yeah he oh, goes wow. into the into, really the, into the the modulator like the voice just the dry voice and adjusts words and increases oh, like the bees so louder yeah he goes in and yeah, so he doesn't just rely on a gate and a compressor. He, like, does it manually, which is... Yeah, it goes through. I think only Anthony Rother would do that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right now I can hear it because it's stripped down. Yeah. I think compression on that would help a lot. Yeah, a little more, be. A little brighter. Make it a bit more up from. A little less echo. There, I mean, you have your pads finally. Yeah, he's got him. He just flipped it by not starting with the pads. Nice. Exactly. Right, nice breakdown in the ends, taking it down for a landing, featuring the cinematic pads in the background, which is nice. Nice track. I think mostly I would, this one I would work on the mix. Where'd he go? Is he getting another beer? Well, Phil, where'd right. you go? I don't mind the mix. <laughs> getting another beer. Yeah, I'm having a beer. Uh, I thought the mix was all right. I don't see that. The drums could be louder. Drums could be louder. Okay. Drums could be louder. I wish the vocal was a little... When the synth is in there, I think like a little more detail on the more vocals. Little, and if it was a little more in front, that would be great. But yeah. Another nice track from Electrotechnique, who has submitted before. Nice work. Let's keep moving. How are we doing for time? It's 20 to 2. You tell me when we've got to wrap it up. 20 to 2. 20 to oh, whatever time it is in your part of the world. Uh, 7. 7 at night. Yeah, we'll do 20 okay, more Okay, so that it? means we've got... We have so five number. more tracks. We either go through them real fast or we cut a couple off. What do you think? Uh, no, no. Okay. Let's go through them okay. a little quicker. This is SH01A Only X, which I... It sounds like a... No, no pads it sounds like a working start. title a little bit. Out. <laughs> Checking. I, I like... It's kind of old school. This is super old school, yeah. And soft. Oh, with the nice uh, synth lines again. 
L O V D is a, is the name. I wonder what that stands for. If you're in the chat, let us know if it stands for something. I like those really little drippy, watery blips. You hear those? It's panning. Oh uh, yeah, I'm getting that. Yeah, yeah. A, a subtle sound. There's more of that detail that we're talking about. Like, like, oh, the back. It's giving. I I like this. It's giving me like it's electro, but it's also got a little little bit of an acoustic, organic feel because of the, like the watery sounds and the the whooshiness, the shakeriness yeah. of the percussion. It's got a nice like, grittiness right. as well. The drums are real gritty. It's like you know maybe we're a little bit into IDM territory here, but, but it's still electro because it's got that groove, right? You still want to dance to it? It's not. Yeah, I think it's kind yeah. of down tempo. But it's that it's what one twenty something, right? I mean, this groove feels so slopes. Oh, the pads. Here we go. No, all right, I pro next. <laughs> this will be a challenge for the next electro feedback session. No, no pads allowed. Yeah. Just Fair purely content, like though. dance floor <laughs> driving <laughs> beats and bass, but no, no chill, no pads. Or a limited usage of pads, like only in the break. Why not start ch challenging people? Like we're getting good, really good submissions. I think people are up for it. Yeah, no, these are great, great songs. All right. Yeah, it's yeah, nice. Like it's only three good minutes song, long. Good vibe, it's got good some, groove. It, it's a nice little. It is quite yeah. IDM. Oh, what's he got for his his profile picture? Is a a little 101 uh -huh. plane, right? From Skopje. Nice work. Nice chill track. Yeah, it is. Good track. Well done. Yeah, I mean, I think for what it is, like, I, I, I don't think I would have changed anything. I think it's really, this is a complete idea. Everything is balanced. I couldn't think of anything I would yeah. fix. Very nice. All right, moving along quickly, we've got Plutonic Core from Boy Boss. Ooh. Is that Roth has joined the chat? Big up, man. Hey, Anthony. <laughs> welcome. Glad to have you. Mm -hmm. I know you're on the road. Lots of gigs. Oh, this is... Slow. So it is. Yeah, another slow this is just quite a lot slower yeah, than the rest. Yeah, this is the, the yeah. most mm -hmm. down-tempo we've had today. Yeah. Nice, though. This reminds me of something that might have come out on a on a dutch label <laughs> you know what i mean just got that, that oh yeah it's a little dark and stripped down and a little weird and in a good way yeah definitely slower than the other ones we've had that that sound in the background that sequence that sounds like it's got some um redux on it or something like bit rate reduction i wish that was a little louder this part's nice Okay. Nice hi hats. Yeah, this 606 hi hats sounds like yeah. really crispy. This is some gangster shit, man. Bit of a yeah, G -funk sound. Like yeah, yeah, back on the G funk. <laughs> we were just but listening to. Uh, you just G -funk have to lean back a little bit before we jumped on. I'm gonna jump in a little bit. Nice. Oh, nice. Transition here. A little suspense. A little diminished harmony. Some drama. Catch that little vocal Whoa, sample. Alright, we're getting... I wasn't sure what to expect. The intro was so much more stripped down, but this is detailed. It's progressing yeah. really well. Lots of variation. I mean, earlier... Was a luminous cloud talking about more funk? This one has it. More fills, more cut up yeah, stuff. G it's getting glitchy now, just slightly glitchy. Working the bass. Right, nice rhythmic variation. Tasteful cowbell inclusion. <laughs> Not too gratuitous. Yeah, yeah. It's pitched down, right? Actually, it might have been a tom now that I think about it. It's missing the the, the the fifth tone above it. 
It's like non-303 acid line, sounds like. This is good. Let's jump in a little bit. Let's hear how it ends. Like a melody that's like completely out of key on purpose. <laughs> He's got the pads, that's good. It's good. <laughs> They're ended, everyone's ending with pads now. I'm serious. N next uh, electro feedback session, we are placing a limit on the pads, just as a challenge. I think that'll work out. Okay, as we barrel through, we've got Ellie Groove Tiger, aka Shy Kine, Opal Ectro. Nice. Whoa, crazy groove. Yeah. It makes me want to do this. Super robotic. Like, if you're going to be robotic in 2023, you have to go a little bit farther. Because things are weird nowadays. Oh, that's just a mad, a mad track. Crazy grooves. Yeah, yeah interesting. Unique style. There's quite a it lot, is going, a lot on going on. I like I, it. I might reduce it a bit. Strip wow. it back. Mm. Gonna, but yeah. nice sounds. Turn it down just a tad. It's really squashed and loud in my headphones right now. I mean, I I like this. I feel like there would be a challenge to use this as a DJ. This would be like the weird point of the night, right? Like, people would really have to be twisted somehow. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe. Uh -huh. There's so much group. going on in there with the swirly stuff. And, like, oh. and he says, if there's a... Ah, can I get this high enough? Can you read this? Not your typical electro banger, but expect uh. the unexpected. Yes. Metahertz says, what is going on? Oh, I, I see know. what's happening. Okay, so this is cool. E Ellie's in the chat. Eli Groove Is Ellie or Eli? Eli Groove Tiger saying all the sounds were made with Opal. I did a couple of streams where I was using this Max for Live device Opal to generate random stuff and make techno out of, and he used it to make weird stuff, oh, wow. weird experimental sounds for Electro. So that explains a lot. What is it? I've never heard of it. Uh, there's a developer called Fours. FORS that makes really cool and I yeah. if I get it right worked with uh, Electron at some point maybe um, or it is doing oh, cool. stuff similar to that workflow but in the software and um, Opal okay. is like a, it's multiple instruments with a sequencer and it's really fun you can be really specific with it but also it's really fun to just randomize everything and come up with crazy noises you should try it oh uh, yeah I'll check it out Metahertz reminds us, yes, Fours was one of the main devs for Electron. So his oh, Max okay, Live cool. devices are serious. Oh, that wicked. Like this this reminds me a little bit of, like, Meat Beat Manifesto. You remember? Okay. 90s Jack yeah. Dangers, layered breakbeats and industrial noises and weird samples. Very yeah, similar yeah. vibe, maybe less aggressive than Meepy Manifesto, but similar vibe. It's like kind of experimental breakbeat music at this point. I'm somehow. I like it. It's good. A lot of interesting elements. I would say if if I would fix anything, it would be to let it break down. Sometimes it's quite relentless. Yes, it's a busy song, but I think the grooves, the grooves are nice. nice. The sounds are yeah, interesting. There's a lot of potential with this, uh, but maybe it could use a little more sculpting in terms of arrangement. Yeah, I awesome. Yeah. All right, we're we're getting there. We've got now Aquarian Dreams from Willie G. Somehow we just jumped over to Detroit. All right, we got the pads yeah. at the start again. We're good. This is definitely fitting the theme <laughs> of today. <laughs> yeah, I quite like the vibe of this. 
some nice words here from Willie G. He made this as an entry for the fantastic Always Electro Saturday. Thank you so much. Long time lurker. Thank you for the amazing content. Really glad to have you. And he says, everything is hardware sequenced with Circlon, which is cool. Circlon is right, a cool. really great hardware sequencer. And then arranged and mixed yeah, in Ableton. Nazi, so. And Willie wants to know if the vocal is working, which have we heard a vocal yet? There I it think is. So. Oh, there we go. I like the chords. Just as a harmonic element, that was awesome. I like the lead, how it's bubbly because the attack time's a little bit long. It's like. It's, it's a good, well made song. Good vibe, good sounds, good groove. Maybe the mixing is the next step, probably. Yeah, I think he said in this thing he hadn't done much, yeah, much mixing yeah. on the comments. It's a nice They're sequence. Nice. And you know, you have the same melody played on the sort of more quiet, bubbly sound, and then the brighter, sharper sound. They mi mix really well together. They're panned apart just a little bit. I like to hear that kind of detail. <laughs> nice. Oh, this. Bit of acid. <laughs> I think you could be confident about the idea for that vocal, for the vocoder. I, I again, I like if you're going to speak through a vocoder, it should be clear and comprehensible. Like that's something that could be worked on, like how well it's articulated. Yeah, it's quite a yeah. soft sound. I mean, though, right on this one. It could be just being louder and EQ'd a little bit might make all the difference. Yeah. Letting it ride. I like the subtle 303 in the background. It's not in your face. It doesn't. It's not an acid track. The, the 303 is like a 303 is like a background element. Yeah, backup. Let's jump in a little bit. All right, more of the same. I mean, solid, not not knocking that. I mean, nice track, really good vibe, cool melodic ideas. Yeah, I like that one. Good, nice hyp hypnotic, Definitely. hypnotic groove. Um, I feel like a track that's over five, almost six minutes could use a little more variation in the arrangement, right? But. Yeah, maybe short, short, you can you shorten, can shorten it, it down and let it just be a you know a solid statement at like four and a half minutes. I mean, I feel like nowadays DJs play tracks shorter than ever, <laughs> depending on your style of music, yeah. right? If you're not doing like epic build ups or something, then those tracks are still long. But a lot of tracks yeah, yeah. are just you know, the DJ plays it for two, three minutes, so it doesn't need to be long. But if you are going to go long for the listening experience, then go a little develop it a little bit more. What other musical ideas can you get? Yeah, some new layers perhaps. And or just varying the melodies that you have. Same sound but create a contrasting part for it to play. Like a modulating somehow yeah. into a different key or whatever, you know. There's lots of ways to do it. Excellent. All right, we've got we're at the end. We're going to we're going to meet we're going to make our 2 o'clock cutoff. This is perfect. And this is <laughs> Uniting by Parallel Preservation. Ooh, nice. A little more tough beginning now. I like that. More te 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 techno -y vibes. Yeah, it's maybe like a little broken beat techno, but let's hear where it goes. Depends if there's a snare coming in or not, right? Nice. Very nice reverb on this. Yeah. Very spacious. Good mix. Yeah. yeah. Trippy lead sound. I like it. Metahertz is curious about what the bass, low end bass percussion kind of part is. I mean, it could be a lot of things. Maybe if uh, Parallel Preservation is in the chat, you could enlighten us. What did you use to make that low end pattern? Sounds like there's some portamento in there, some envelope retriggering, some detuning between oscillators, maybe. Oh, yeah. 
an interesting choice of um not the snare i was it's expecting it's like 80s snare it's like 80s ebm yeah, industrial it's snare just, it sounds like skinny puppy yeah diff different to what <laughs> which to me helps it stands out from everybody else it's not yet another 808 yeah, popping through you for know? sure yeah exactly Parallel Preservation is here. Hey, nice track. He, he used uh, minimal audio rift for the bass. Ah. Cool melody. And definitely giving me 80s yeah. vibes still. Yes. Sounds like a mixture of styles. I would have loved this in the late 80s when I was learning how to make music. Gonna yeah. dig out my skinny puppy cassettes. <laughs> I almost, I'm, I'm ready for that like really weird, twisted, distorted vocal to come in. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. Some little boy. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, nice. And like, you know, it's dark and driving, but it's also trippy and spacey at the same time. Yeah, it's got a good, yeah. Good trippy vibe to it. Let's jump in a little bit. Yeah, man, I like the kind of experimenting with the sounds. It sounds... Is there some granular stuff going on in there? As Acid Bat points out, Skinny Puppy was definitely influenced by early electro and hip-hop. Totally true. Okay. I don't really you should know go the check, check out some of the early stuff. You'll hear it. They're using the right drum machines. Yeah, yeah, I'll check it out. More pads. I have the pad. I feel like you could render this whole track without the beats and it's like soundtrack music or ambient, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it would still be developing interesting in interesting ways. All right, this is a really long break. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to jump through it. This is a seven minute long, seven minute, 40 second long track. This whole break oh, is wow, probably is like a minute and a half or a minute. Uh, Four, five and a half. It's a minute and a half. All right, we'll give him 30 seconds for the beat to come back in. And it sounds bright and happy and sunshiny right now compared to before. Even with those evil vocal samples. Interesting. Yeah, different, different vibes on the pads. Interesting. I mean, not what I expected at all in terms of where it was going to go for the vibe. Yeah, it almost sounds like it's become another piece of music. That might yeah. be it. More electro -y now for me. Yeah. More electro now because of the melody? I just think, yeah, just has a more electro -y vibe to it. It tells a story, that's for sure. I mean, just compared... Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the same underlying groove. It's just that melody just changes everything. Yeah. I'm going to... There's... You know what would tie this together musically? All right. I like the rolling Go techno e bass. But it... Yeah. It sounds like it's a different... In a different key. Or it doesn't sound like it's in key. So when you listen to okay, it like this... this the chart. Oops. It makes it sound like a different harmony. But when the melody comes in, it shifts how it sounds, how it feels in terms of what key it's in and the vibe. And it, I don't know that it matches the low end. Like, maybe think about a, a, a more melodic bass part that matches. And I'm not saying, you know, it has to be like very all over the place melody, but like something that emphasizes like the, the fundamental of the chord, the root of the chord that you're playing. And that it balances yep. that melody. And then if you use that in the beginning, it will make more sense when the melody comes in because it'll they'll be in the same harmonic space. But my two cents, take it or leave it. Guys, this is great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the fun. So I don't feel like I was that, that technical today, but I enjoyed listening yeah, to the well, songs. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if you want to come back and like share a Pro Tools session again sometime, we could get techie. 
the, the whole point of this is to just yes. listen and you know give some some time and some ideas to the to the people submitting their music and checking out new new music and also just hanging out and having a beer across the Atlantic is reason enough for me yeah with, 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 the with, with people York. that Cheers. i <laughs> respect and whose music that i enjoy so really glad to have you on the show thanks to everybody in the chat all the viewers for hanging out and listening with us yeah um, thank you anthony rother thanks for stopping by again say thanks to our, our oh charlie, man charlie was a lifesaver come back come <laughs> over here and wave to everybody <laughs> He 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 helped us get the Thanks video and the audio going. Sorry that we started late, but it all came yeah, through right. in the end. This was a great session. Um, nice to meet those of you who I've not met before. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna call it. Nice um, to I'm gonna say goodbye now. Thanks to everybody. We'll see you again next week. Audio, so yeah, guys, hang you. out. Cheers. Don't hang up yet. Uh, we can talk while we're uh, playing out the the end of the show. All right. Uh, okay. So, Adios, right, everybody.